today we're opening up at least one more Senpop stationery box with items directly from Japan. I have a lot of fun opening up these because they're not specifically art supplies. And then I try to take what's in the box and make some form of illustration or art project with it. So let's find out what's inside this month's box. Hey, this month has a sticker. It's actually really, really cute. It's the Zen Pop mascot Luna with little rainbow line art. Another thing different this month is a small, I guess it's a birthday card. It is Zen Pop's, oh, here it is. Zen Pop's third birthday. And they're also doing a bunch of giveaways and they wanted to do a special giveaway for fans of the channel. So I'm very excited. There'll be much more information in the description with details on how to enter that and get your own Zen Pop box. Here we have the list of all the items in this month's box, which I will kind of keep on the low over there as we open up, ooh, bread. We have a bunch of bread stickers. I always love how the sticker sheet's separate from the backdrop. Adorable bakery items ranging from bagels to pretzels and egg on toast. We have an art supply. This is the Zig Art and Graphic Twin. So it has two different tips. One side, if it wants to open, has a brush nib. And then the other end has a bullet. Deep green. Oh, that's very squishy. Just by the way it's working, I'm gonna guess it is water-based. All right, the next item looks like it's getting a little mangled in here. Oh, these are adorable. Look at the little bread man. So these are a bunch of characters that are popular in Japan, which means I've never seen them before. <laughs> oh, they're two different designs. There's this cute pink one. It's shaped like bread with little characters on the bottom. And this one with lines so that you can write straight with more of the same characters and more food items. All right, this thing's the next thing speaking to me. Okay, so this is the Happy Foods Mini Joint Stamp. And these are the four designs. So it looks like all the different stamps are stacked together so you can like carry it around or something. <laughs> if we take off this top, mm, no, maybe that's not what we do. All right, maybe if we take it from here, we go, we got our little toast. Yeah. Bread, you take it off and then you have, looks like a little milkshake. Oh, and it's blue. I think the next one's a little sandwich. There we go. <laughs> it looks like Doritos when you do it like that. And then finally, a little cupcake. There we go. <laughs> there we have our little stamps. All right, next, it looks like a magnetic bookmark featuring some more cute characters. If we open it up, packaging, hmm, cinema roll. What's this extra little thick bit for? Oh, does it have little post-it notes in it? It's got 15 small sticky notes inside. So while you use it for a bookmark, the magnet is not that strong, but like obviously, I mean, kind of stays in there a little bit. Uh -huh. But what's cool is like you have it in there and if you're reading, you're like, oh, that's important. You can pull out a little sticky note. All right, next up we have Oh, it's got a little toast on the end. Another pencil featuring those very cute characters. The little bakery corner characters. It does not have an eraser. Instead, it features a cute little bread man. Next, some more <laughs> of those characters. I should learn how to say the word so I sound knowledgeable. Sumiko Gyurashi. I don't know. But they're all over all the items in this box. So these are pencil caps. Oh, so it's to protect the lead. You know how you sharpen your pencil and then you put it in your pencil case and it gets busted. <gasps> oh, nifty. So it's pretty tight and it doesn't go too far up the pencil. Sharpening a pencil for the first time feels satisfying and brutal at the same time. <laughs> Fun shapes like that. Maybe I've been using some low quality pencils lately, but they don't always do that. <laughs> this is the part I'm, I'm amazed by. That's funny. Then we could put this in her, treat it roughly, and it's going to be just fine. And it also, not only does it protect the pointy bit, but it protects your pencil case from getting dirty. That actually seems much more important. <laughs> so there were five of them in there. Next, we have another special Zen Pop item. And here it is. So it says, I love kawaii, hashtag Zen Pop Japan, with a flexible, I don't know, what do you call that, pen clip? There it is. <laughs> oh, it actually writes, well, now it just gave up on me. But it feels kind of smooth. Yeah, it's a pretty basic ballpoint pen there. All right, next. Oh, it's got Pikachu! 
I know that character. I can say that one. I can say that word. I think I'm in. I'm in. I'm gonna put this right in here because it's cute. Oh, now that I've gotten to the actual tape, you can see the fun designs on this washi tape. It's Pikachu and more bakery items. You got a Pikachu pretzel, Pikachu with a bread, Pokemon sandwich, Pikachu and a pancake, Pikachu and a donut, Pikachu butt cookies. The problem is when washi tape is this cute, it's difficult to use it because you don't want to waste. Probably just appreciate the Pikachu butt cookie. Hmm. <laughs> this is my favorite item. All right, and the final, oh my gosh. Okay, the final item is a tiny little lunch box of erasers, it looks like, with some more of those Sumiko Girashi characters. Let me just open this up, I wanna see them. Oh, I can get in. Of seven erasers. So here we got the one with the little toast. And then six more of these Sumikos. <laughs> They're so tiny. I think these are meant to be just adorable. <laughs> Which they accomplish that task very well. I want to know why the bread doesn't look very happy. All right, I believe that is everything. I'm going to read through this, make sure I didn't miss anything important. Oh man, look at that precious cinnamon roll. This is going to be tricky. How will I use these to like make something? What if we made just a little bakery for these little guys to live in? I like how they're flat on the bottom so they can actually stand up. These things are making me hungry. <laughs> Last time I like I stuck and pasted some of these in my sketchbook, which I think helped me see everything all at once and gave me a better visualization of what I was working with. I'm gonna do that again. Make a cute little <laughs> collage. Not sure how we can use erasers. Pencil caps again, can't really use those in art or nor can we use these, but we can try to take some kind of inspiration from them. Oh, but we also have these, this guy. Oh, look how it like <laughs> reloads another one. So I'm noticing all of these characters have very similar eyes. So they all have like tiny little dots for eyes. So all of these little Sumiko Gurashis, they all have very similar faces, which kind of gives them similarities between all of the designs, which are these tiny little little dots for eyeballs and a line for a mouth so i'm wondering if i could try and take inspiration from that and draw my own little characters first one coming to mind obviously is a blubfish and i'm gonna draw him as i would usually draw him so here's a little blubfish as i would usually draw him kind of like in my style i guess is the way to put it and let's try drawing at least similar to the sumiko gurashis that's how you say that word <laughs> let me go back to the pencil Okay, so they look like they have little nubs for arms, so we can actually do that with our bloodfish too. <laughs> and then little dots for the eyes. And not a big variety in the mouths. A lot of the mouths are just like this. I don't see any with like a tongue hanging out. And that's kind of crucial for a bloodfish, so I'm gonna just have to do it anyway. And then for his tail, I guess we'll just cutify it a little more. Oh my gosh, he looks so different. I feel like it's hardly recognizable. I am a pretty big fan of this pencil though. Let me try again. I wonder if I can like change the shape. Definitely use losing the fishness. Pikachu. Okay, now it looks like Kirby. So I think these are water based. So I'm gonna mix it with a little water and get like a lighter green color. Kind of makes it look like water. But we also have a lot of bakery items. I definitely need to incorporate those in some way which might mean changing up the direction of this completely. <laughs> I'm looking down. He looks like a little onion. <laughs> I want to try something a little different. Kind of inspired by the Pikachu washi tape. I kind of draw a blubfish as a food, <laughs> like ice cream or something. I don't know, I've never drawn foods. So like he's a little, uh, I don't know, ice cream scoops. <laughs> But I feel like we're definitely straying away from the bakery theme. Because this is an ice cream cone. Not really the same thing. Oh, well, there's my character Blobfish as an ice cream cone. Interesting idea. <laughs> definitely out of my normal drawing range. Definitely out of practice with drawing Pikachu. Sheesh. Still cute though. Yeah. <laughs> This might be one of those times when I just need to turn my brain off and see what happens. This is tricky. I feel like this is the key. These little bakery stickers. What if we draw like a scene with a character baking something and then we put all of these little 
Sumiko Gurashi's, you know, just hanging out with the character as they bake. We could put it in a circle, that's fun too. And that way we can use some of these stickers to kind of line the bakery. And maybe she's just noticing them because I think these, char these characters are supposed to be really, really shy. So they would be hiding. So maybe she only sees the one because it just, oops, accidentally got seen. Hopefully this isn't going against anything important about these. And then we'll have a bunch of other ones like hiding behind like some of the bakery items. Maybe she's carrying some cookies or probably the birthday cake. We guys should make it a birthday cake. She just spots them. I'm liking the idea, but I want to change up the positioning. What if it's hiding behind the cake? <laughs> and the character thinks they saw something. Oh, I like that idea better. <laughs> right now I gave it arms and legs, it's fine. I like that. I don't know. It's very rough, but I think it's all I need to move on to a piece of paper. And we'll find some way to use this washi tape too. Okay, so I want it to fit inside a circle, so I'm going to start there. Alright, then we want the character here, which is important. And we'll try and fit the background around the character. We'll have them kind of moving like this, heads here, picking up the cake almost to eye level. And then when you pick up, your shoulders kind of, yeah, and the character should be looking in. The shoulders will be scrunched a little. The arms will be coming out like this to hold up a cake. I like <laughs> have to keep miming the pose so I can figure it out. Got a little face. I'm using like a towel. Like they just pulled the cake out of the oven or something. Although I don't know if those little characters can survive. 350 degrees. Obviously this candle will not be lit. <laughs> and then we need our little character. I wonder if we can cut the table here. And then throw something here that they can hide behind. Maybe a window here. We'll open up that space. I'm going to give her a little employee visor. <laughs> Here we got our little Sumiko Gurashi. I will never find that easy to say. How's this for a way of avoiding drawing hands? <laughs> and then are these shelves too small? You definitely use a lot of the croissants. <laughs> I'm kind of liking this drawing. It's crazy how I started with like literally no clue and I've got something now. I just want to have these guys out to give me company. They're just so pleasant. Maybe they're hanging up on something. Maybe they have like pretzel hangers. And we might have to cut some of these to make them fit back here. So if I plaster them kind of on top, it'll give the illusion that they all look kind of nice is what I'm hoping for. All right, and then we need to hide more of these little characters. It looks like a poop, but it was supposed to be whipped cream or frosting or something. <laughs> All right, I think I want to go in and add some line art. Try using this pen, but I don't know how well markers will withstand next to it. I can test that. Okay, definitely bleeds significantly. So I think what I will do is just use my own fine liners and do that real quick. Race it a smidge. I'm either gonna do the circle first or last. What should I do? Guess it's gonna be last. There's the face. <laughs> It was going really well. I think I've decided this will be my own little character. It's going to be based loosely off this cute little one right here. So I'm going to put my own little pizzazz on it. I don't know what this is based off of. That would help me when I'm trying to draw it. Here we go. Character's done. Okay, I think it's time we did the circle. Everything looks a little too small. What about this masking tape? Dang it. I can just go around here and use this. I think I'm just going to eyeball it. Oop, it's already way smaller than it was supposed to be. Yeah. Trying to freehand a circle over here. What are you up to today? All right. Yeah, I mean. All right. Yep, yep, yep. What if we put one outside looking through the window? Maybe the one of the ones that looks like a cat. <laughs> I don't know how to draw these things. I like the little dinosaur one. Pretzels. Yeah, how do you even draw a pretzel? I should do backgrounds more often. All right, next step, add a little color. I think stickers and like other little accessories would definitely be the last. People wanted me to incorporate more of these little things, but I'm not entirely sure how. I'll definitely keep it in mind. All right, for the color scheme, I'd kind of like to keep to this a little bit. I really like the colors. 
So what if the surfaces of like the working surface is more of this color and then the cabinets can be green? That is dried out. Nothing else. Okay, two yellow. Close, that's pretty close actually. So I think we can start with this crystal opal color. Go ahead and color in the cabinets. We'll try to keep pastel and see if it needs more contrast after that. Maybe these. I'm gonna keep this out in case I need more of it. Let's try to find something like that. Hmm, pretty close. Try this for the work surfaces and the countertops. It's kind of like a birch color. Probably use this to add a little shading to the green too. I'm thinking I do want this cabinet to be a little bit more blue. Just want to make it a little bit more prominent. And for the walls, we try a desaturated pink. Mm, this is really dark, so it's going to be completely different than what we already have on here. But I think it's what we need. I like that it's not too saturated. Yeah, I'll take it. I kind of like the way this looks. Definitely more of a risk. Oh, you know what I forgot to color? This. Got a nice kind of whimsical background color so far. And then for our character, maybe we'll go a little bit more saturated so she sticks out. This is a nice saturated skin tone, barely beige. Oh, it's like really saturated. Oh well, I'm committed. I don't know, I'm feeling weirdly optimistic about this drawing, so I'm just like throwing colors at it. Coloring the cake a little with this like basically white pink color. Actually, black might work really well for the hair because I don't have anything that dark yet, at least. There we go. That's a saturated color. The red is the best color. I wonder if I have any other colors that are two and four. Shading with the gray is not always the best idea, but I want the background to be less saturated than the character. This might be a good way of emphasizing that. A little too saturated. <laughs> Kind of got distracted and forgot this was a background element. I think I should color in the towels a little bit. Not sure what color though. Now the problem is these are really saturated so I might have made a mistake but it's uh, I, I, I'll, I'll live with it. <laughs> then a little bit of this. Blend it out. Kind of trying to use these as reference to kind of color my own baguettes. It's kind of interesting. I would have thought to do it this way. There we go. It's look kind of tasty. What am I using? I'm using copper and light sand suntan. Kind of mixing them together. And then it looks like this. They look pretty tasty to me. I want to try and throw some of these on there. Let's grab this little tiny bag. Not baguette. <laughs> Croissant. Kind of just stack it on here. Colors are definitely off, but I like how they're like a little shiny bits. Stick some of the baguettes. They kind of blend in until you like see the shines. That's shiny to you right now, but it's not shiny at all to me. And then when I pick it up, it's shiny to me and it's not shiny to you. I'm gonna put a random piece of burnt toast right here. Oh, that looks so flat. No, I don't like that. I think I want to make a towel that she's using to have this design on it. I have to cut them out. They're just not quite the right shape. Luckily, it's transparent enough where I could probably get away with just cutting out the ones I want and kind of stick them closer together. I think I want to cut a little bit of this off. Ooh, another thing we can do. I'm going to put it along this edge. I mean, they're not really fitting into the perspective. The Blub Bakery. That's cute. I think I'll leave it with the pencil. I could go over it with this. Add a little extra texture. I really can't complain for something that I had no idea leading up into this and how long it took me to come up with an idea. I do want to like stick these guys in here somewhere. I'll stick a few of these in here. Why not? I'm gonna find my glue stick. Maybe I can add a little bit of shading to it. Make it blend in a bit more. Look less plastered on there. Oh, something like that. A little too uh, gray. Let me go over it with some ivory. Blend it in. What if I can get this guy to fit somewhere? 
cut them out. It'll blend in a little better. Oh. There we go. At least we managed to stick one in there. <laughs> I tried my best. I don't obviously the most vast knowledge of these Sumiko Gurashis, but you know, I kind of put my own spin on it with my own knowledge of the things I have knowledge on. It was really fun to also draw Blobfish in their kind of style and kind of explore that end. But this is the illustration. Wow. <clears throat> but this is the illustration that I came up with. I think it's pretty cute and it makes me really inspired to draw more backgrounds. So uh, maybe I can do that in the future. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget about that giveaway, which will be linked in the description and there'll be plenty of more information there. Send Pop's running it, especially for you guys. So hop on over there. And if you're interested in getting your own Zen Pop subscription, I'll also have a link for that as well. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys all next week and I hope you have a delicious evening full of waffles.